Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Engineering Student Experience Podcast. I'm Paul Nissenson from the Mechanical Engineering Department at Cal Poly Pomona. Most engineering students have an ultimate goal of obtaining at least a bachelor's degree. Many students will start out as freshmen at a university that offers such a degree, like my very own Cal Poly Pomona. However, it's very common for students to start their coursework at a community college instead, and after two or three years, transfer to another institution where they can complete their bachelor's degree requirements, which might take another two or three years or so. In my own department, each year, roughly half of the incoming students are transfer students from community colleges. Now, there are many possible reasons why a student would want to start at a community college. Community college tuition is usually relatively inexpensive. Students may want to stay closer to home for as long as possible for personal reasons. Students may not have the necessary grades in high school to be accepted as a freshman at a university that offers bachelor's degrees. And students may be unsure about which major is right for them and want to explore a variety of majors first at a relatively low cost. Well, in today's episode, we are going to explore what it's like to be an engineering transfer student. Joining me are Andrew Diamond and Johnny Yi, both of whom are currently aerospace engineering students at Cal Poly Pomona and who transferred from community colleges a couple of years ago back in fall of 2019. Andrew and Johnny discuss why they went to community college, how they prepared to transfer to a university and what that transition was like. They discuss the differences between their community college and Cal Poly Pomona, and they provide advice for engineering students who are at a community college and hope to one day transfer to a university to finish their bachelor's degree. Before we get to the interview, I want to take a moment to promote Andrew and Johnny's wonderful podcast called Aeroholics Anonymous. And in this podcast, they describe what it's like to be an engineering student in the moment while they are still completing their bachelor's degree. Their podcast focuses on the challenges of juggling schoolwork and internships in their personal life. And they also talk about various topics within the field of aerospace engineering as well. It's very entertaining. It's a really fun podcast. As you'll hear, they're natural podcasters and Aeroholics Anonymous is definitely well worth checking out especially if you're interested in becoming an engineering student one day. You can find their podcast on all popular podcast platforms, and I'll also place a link in the show notes. Anyways, I had a great time recording this episode, and I hope you'll enjoy it too. So let's get to that interview. Well, I am here with Andrew Diamond and Johnny Yee, who are both aerospace engineering students in your senior year. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> senior-ish year, senior-ish year uh, at Cal Poly Pomona. And today we're going to talk all about what it's like to be a transfer student. So what it's like to go from a community college and then transfer over to a university where they can complete their, their bachelor's degree. So first of all, Andrew and Johnny, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah, where we actually part your podcast was part of the reason why I wanted to get into podcasting. So it's very cool. Well, actually, yeah, I heard, I first heard you both uh, or learned about you both through your Aeroholics Anonymous uh, podcast. And, and I love the podcast because you're talking about what it's like to be an aerospace engineering student in the moment while the memories are still fresh. Right. And it's been over, well, not quite 20 years. It'll almost be 20 years since I finished my, my bachelor's degree. And so all my memories, I, I don't know how accurate they are anymore. Um, but it's great that you're capturing it. And so anyone listening to your podcast, if they're interested in what it's like to be an aerospace engineering student, they can actually learn firsthand. Uh, so I think it's really great. Right. Yeah. I'd have to agree. I, I didn't think about that or consider that aspect, but I guess that is a part of the allure of what our podcast is. And it might be interesting because maybe in 10, 20 years, we'll look back and listen and it'll be a bit of a time capsule as well. Or we'll just cringe at it either way. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah. I have trouble listening to my older episodes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, one episode that is like really highly relevant for today is your transfer student survival guide 
episode. And, and so a lot of the themes that we're going to talk about today, you talked about it in that episode, maybe in greater depth, but uh, we'll try to cover some of the stuff that you uh, maybe didn't cover in that episode. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. yeah, I love talking about it. My experience transferring. It's an interesting one for sure. And it's a really common one because uh, something you know, depends on the year, but something like half of our students in, in, in my department in mechanical engineering are transfer. So mm -hmm. it's a super, super common experience. But, you know, for high school students, you know, they might not know what they're really getting in for, you know, any high school students listening to this episode. So let me take you back all the way to high school. Uh, back then, did you know that you wanted to be an engineering student and did you have any ideas about, you know, what kind of coursework you'd be taking in college? Well, Andrew, you should take this one first, right? <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I knew, well, actually, okay, let's take an even further step back. Um, I knew as early as middle school that I wanted to go into aerospace engineering and I was, I thought I was dead set on it. And then it wasn't until like my junior year where I completely changed, like flipped the script. I went back and I was like, I don't think I'm cut out for engineering. I'm going to go into business. So I basically focused my senior year on, you know, applying to school strictly for business. And I got into school for that. Um, so I didn't expect to be where I am today. You know, my coursework at the time was going to be drastically different. Um, but I always wanted to be an aerospace engineering student. I just didn't think I was capable. So that was one of the main motivations behind the podcast is because I really wanted to like reach out to an audience that didn't think they were capable and let them know like it's anything's possible basically. Yeah. And I think my story is a bit different from Andrew and I, I liked space, but I never associated space with engineering. I've always heard the terminology. It's not rocket science, you know, but uh, kind of going into it now, it's uh, in, in going into high school, I always had this interest in how things functioned. And I always wanted to explain or have an explanation for how mechanical systems worked as well. But that wasn't something that necessarily translated into, oh, like, you know, I like space. I want to have, or I like space and I, I like mechanical systems. Let's put that together and try to pursue something in engineering. So in high school, I, I took um, a class called mechatronics, and that's supposed to be an amalgamation of different engineering courses. And I, I didn't quite enjoy myself. And I think it was also because we were considered the, uh, uh, what would you say, guinea pigs of uh, the entire course. And so we'd learn things that I, I think were not applicable at all. But it was still, I, I still had an interest in it. And just going into high school and straight into college, it was just, I, I didn't have the discipline. And so that's just kind of what stop me from progressing at the rate that I wanted to. And so, yeah, I kind of understood the difficulty of it. I just didn't have the discipline according. I mean, the, the discipline that is required of, I believe, an engineering student to be able to um, succeed in the early years of university or, or college, wherever it may be. So Andrew started off with business. Uh, what did you start off as, uh, Johnny? I started off as an engineering student, <laughs> um, a, a self-proclaimed engineering student that was declared at the community college level. But there was no such thing as declaring as an aerospace engineering student at community college. It's just engineering. So so uh, why did you decide to start at a community college? Was it financial reasons? Was it family reasons or maybe maybe low grades in high school or something like that? I'll, Johnny, you could start that because yours is probably much more relevant. Mine is like a really backward story, so go for it. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Andrew, yours is. Um, for me, one was, okay, I don't know if Andrew knows this, so this might be getting a little bit into the weeds here, but when I was, I was not a good student. <laughs> and so just to put that in perspective, we, we had to write personal statements and I'm, I'm pretty sure some of the listeners or some of you guys that have already applied to university and college have personal statements that you guys have written. And then there's this whole application process that you guys have to go through to try to apply to university. Um, now I did do that part, but then I just didn't understand how to input my family's finances that well. And so it, we ended up, I ended up inputting numbers that were a lot higher than what our family actually made. And so I didn't qualify for applications like waivers. <laughs> And that resulted in me not being able to send in any of my applications, even though I wrote in a personal statement and all. And I was like, ah, it's okay. I'm fine. I'll just go to community college like my sister did. So 
it's kind of a financial issue in that aspect, but also I didn't have it in me to try to go to a university and try to, um, I guess, get thrown into the deep end because I was not a good student. I had this very arrogant mentality that uh, if I just sit in class, I didn't do homework, I could I could t- retain the material and do well. And it was odd for me to think that because my grades, grades did not reflect that in high school, but that's just the way that it turned out. And so it's a combination of both the fact that my grades were not good and, and I knew that I wanted to do engineering. And I've heard of um, these horror stories about students that would be in university and they'd be put on probation due to the fact that their grades are not good. And then on top of that, I was afraid that that would happen to me and, you know, being in university might be expensive. And so that's an expensive mistake to make. So I'd rather make that in community college where it's a lot cheaper. Um, and then on top of that, it was also the fact that I just did not send in any applications. So, um, yeah, that's that's a long winded way of saying uh, those two combinations of what you were asking and proposing as a possible reason why community college. But that's I think those are pretty fair ways to put it. But Andrew's not so orthodox in that way. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> no, not at all. So. Like I mentioned, right, senior year, was applying to school for business, got into a few schools. And um, honestly, I I probably did this out of like, out of rebellion. Um, I went to a school that I originally thought I would have to move to or for. I went to um, Cal State Dominguez Hills, and that's located in like by LA, Compton, basically. Um, Really far from my house, but I got put into this really bad position. So this is a lesson for all you young folks that are like, want to you know, show your parents who's boss. Don't do that because it never works out. I got put into this position where I was going to a school that I didn't really love and I was commuting and like I didn't, it was just a bad experience, but that's besides the point. So I got into that school, um, you know, and I started going there, taking some classes and I kind of realized that's when I had the realization like, hey, business isn't for me. So what do I what do I do now? I'm like, OK, let's go back to plan A. Let's go into engineering. Let's see what I what I can do. What are my options, basically? So I figured I'm already at a, at, at a Cal State. There's no point in going back. Let's uh, let's try to, you know, transfer departments. So comes I come to find out my school actually doesn't have an engineering department at Cal State Dominguez Hills. At the time, it, I don't think they have, I still don't think they have one, but they're more science and technology focused now. So I I started thinking about what are my options. I looked into going into physics, um, didn't really want to do that. So I thought, hey, I don't like this school that much. No offense <laughs> to anybody that goes to Cal State Dominguez Hills. I started thinking, I don't really like it that much. Why don't I just go back home, close to home, go to a Cal- community college by my house, and transfer. So that's what I did. I I had my community college was literally like five minutes from my house. It was great, you know, saving a lot of money. Um, and I, if I had the option to do it all over again, right out of high school, I would definitely go to community college first. Um, I think that it's really underrated the education that you get at community college. And it really has prepared me to he put me in a great position when I got to CPP. Um, And I think like the, the stigma behind community colleges is you typically don't get a a good education or whatever it is. I don't think that's accurate at all. So if anybody's out there and like undecided and, you know, think that that's not a good idea, I think I encourage it if, you know, to to explore those options if you can. And if that's what you want to do, there's nothing wrong with it. So yeah, that's how I got to community college and then transferred into CPP later. That is a, a long journey you took. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Right. Very odd one. And, and as Johnny was m- mentioning or alluding to, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, if you're not sure what you want to do or, or it, it's a cheap way to explore different uh, possible pathways um, compared yeah. to going to a Cal State. I think right now, at, and I'm speaking about California community colleges, it's something like if you're a full time student, like this is not including books, but tuition and fees is something like a thousand to fifteen hundred per year, I think. If last time I checked, Cal States are around like seven thousand per year, so you could save quite a bit of money. Um, oh yeah, and, and and it's to say that Cal State is not even it's not expensive by any means, especially if you're in state. But I think I remember um, the units because they do like dollar amount per unit, and I believe it's under. I want to say it's under like one hundred and fifty dollars per unit. Uh, well, I think last time I checked, it was like $46 a unit. 
Okay, that that see, I I, I was trying to be relatively. Uh, I didn't want to put out a number that sounds. But that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, I I have a, a niece that's going to a community college, so I just happen to know that off the top of my head. Yeah, Otherwise, I have no clue. And that's a great number. So it shouldn't. It should be something that endorses people and pushes people to, you know, if they're concerned, then a forty six dollar per unit class is not something I guess too risky to take on. So I know a lot of the times you could actually get like grants uh, to pay for your community college entirely. And you could actually save a lot of that money um, and, you know, use it for your books and everything transportation a lot of times. So you could literally get paid to go to school. It's it sometimes works out really well. Right. They have a lot of good programs out in community college that will pay for your books. I was able to get books for free every single semester. Um, I was able to get a scholarship once I found out that scholarships were really easy to get in community college. I've applied to many scholarships while I was at Cal Poly, but I've gotten a single one. But the first time I tried applying at a community college, I got it. And it was a lot of money. It was over a thousand dollars. And I was like, oh, that's nice. So a lot of opportunity out there. As, as I always uh, tell any high school students or, or any college students, always fill out your FAFSA <laughs> every year. Right, right. Early as possible. Yeah. Yeah. That is ingrained in my brain now. So when you were preparing, so, oh, so you've been at a community college, uh, you know, for a couple of years, uh, right? A couple of years or so? Okay. Yeah. And in preparing to transfer to Cal Poly Pomona, uh, did you talk to a lot of counselors uh, at your community college? And um, did you find did you find that their advice was generally pretty good and accurate, or were there some things that they didn't quite prepare you for? Um, that's actually a really good question, and I think uh, is really worth taking the time to talk about because I did not do uh, what I what I what any student should typically do. So I consulted with counselors and and said, "Hey, like, am, basically my." My golden ticket was I wanted to make sure that I got to CPP or got to wherever I was going. So I wanted to make sure that my GEs were fulfilled and that I was eligible for transfer based on like whatever assist.org said. And really what I did was I would look at the assist um, requirements and then I would just go to the counselor and say, hey, I think that I'm eligible for transfer next semester. Can you confirm that basically? And, And they said, yeah, or whatever it is. And I, um, that's basically the, the, all I did to prepare and like to reach out to other people. I, I wasn't, you know, reaching out to students. I wasn't emailing professors, anything like that. Um, which is something I definitely now looking back, I should have done. And I encourage students to do because I was so lost. I didn't know what to expect when I get, got there. And I, that's something that, you know, we're probably going to talk about in a few, but, um, yeah, like I, I, I did not take the proper steps to, to, prepare myself it was really just more of hey i want to get here now that i got here i was like great that's it i'm done let me check out for now once i get to cpp i'll you know pick 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 up the pace essentially but yeah it wasn't it 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 worked i i i'm where i am i struggled a little bit but um it definitely would have been uh more beneficial if i you know use those outlets a little bit more resourcefully yeah, that's a very different story for me. Um, I I went to the counselor so much. Uh, there are a lot of different types of counselors at my community college too. So we had ones that were specifically for STEM as well. And we had general counselors. And then if you were part of a special program, then there was another counselor for that. So I, I was like, I'm going to just shoot for the rainbow and just all of them all at once. And so I had to visit them at least once a semester. I think I had a pro- I was under a program where I had to meet a counselor at least twice a semester. So. Uh, and that's how I got my free book. So, you know, it's uh, it, I was forced to do it. But then at a certain point, they kind of knew, oh, like, you look like you know what you're doing. We're going to leave you alone. But to get to answering whether or not they were accurate and were able to present accurate information, to a certain extent, they were. There's, as Andrew was plugging, assist.org is extremely useful for transfer students because it shows what school, uh, depending on what your target school is, you'll end up having certain classes that are available to you at your community college that would transfer over to the university and they accept that as a uh, an acceptable substitute for another class in that university that you're trying to transfer to. Um, but beyond that, there are certain things that you can't take in community college. And so some of those things cannot be done. 
However, I think the one inaccurate piece of information that I will probably carry to my grave is the fact that they told me at Cal Poly Pomona, if you transfer in for aerospace, it'd be a two-year program. And um, all my friends in community college, including me, we found out that it's not just aerospace that's a three-year program, but it's like across the board. So I have one friend that went into mechanical um, at Cal Poly Pomona, and that was he found out it was a three-year program. And so although our... Counselors told us two years, if as long as you get your I get C, that's like, I guess the agreement, contractual agreement between um, community colleges and then the Cal States. It, as long as you guys can do that, it's like a two year. And, uh, and, then, and then I find out when I get to Cal Poly Pomona in my first semester, I'm like, I just increased my workload and my time required to work at Cal Poly Pomona by 50%. So it's another 365 days of me. So now I'm in my third year. Um, with some reluctance, but also it's, it's also really nice to be able to spread it out and have the ability to learn um, at, a, at a pace that I do and having labs that kind of partner with every single course here. But that inaccurate, it was, that part was inaccurate, but a lot of the other stuff uh, was pretty nice. You get the joy. You get the joy of spending an, one more year at this wonderful institution. Absolutely. So uh, some of the time or some of the reasons why it does take longer um, is because uh, there may be a lack of classes that are related to engineering um, at a community college, or sometimes it's uh, related to issues with courses transferring properly. Did either of you experience th those kind of hurdles? Um, I didn't have any issues with classes not transferring there was definitely i came from a uh community college that wasn't engineering focused so like if you think of the engine uh the community college down the street from cal poly pomona which i can't think of the name can you guys remind me mount sac yeah mount sac if you think of mount sac like that's a community college that's focused on engineering right but ours uh my community college was not um it was it had three sister schools and there was only one one school that offered statics and static and that school was like 40 miles away from me. So I wasn't, you know, driving 40 mile, 80 miles a day to go take a statics class when I could take it at CPP if I, if I didn't transfer with it. So, um, I didn't have like, you know, some of the courses. And so that definitely resulted in me taking a little bit longer. Me and Johnny came in with at the same time and uh he had a few more classes than me but we had still ended up both doing it in three years but you know i know people that even transferred in with with dynamics and still it, you know it's just a, a a long program there's a lot of coursework that we have to do i'm sure it's the same with mechanical and it's just you know you can't squeeze it into two years with like and and maintain your mental health you it's just not possible so um if, if you are afforded that luxury, if you, your community college does have your courses like statics and dynamics, yeah, definitely take it while you can. You'll you'll get to take it and probably learn a lot more because it's, uh, you know, you won't be taking such a heavy course load as well. Right. So, I mean, my school was not considered, I think Mount Sac, and I, my, my community college did not have great opinions about Mount Sac, <laughs> but uh, looking from, you know, somewhere where I'm not, at a community college and I'm at university. I think Mount Sac's a better school than my school. But uh, the only course that I had was statics. And then it was the other course that I had that was an engineering course was circuits. Now, aerospace students don't have to take a circuits course, but I ran out of coursework to do. And I was like, what's the best thing to do? Just take more you know, engineering courses. And so I ended up taking a circuits course. And the reasoning is these, these professors have to be able to teach the course. And uh, of course, community college isn't going to have all the professors that are going to be able to teach these engineering courses since they're trying to be a lot more broad and cover all their bases. So yeah, I, only, I was only able to take static. So I, I literally only had one class over you, Andrew, but yeah, I think in terms of the benefit of taking it at a community college, I think you get a lot more, I, I don't know if Andrew would agree with this. I think he's a lot better at reaching out to professors. Um, maybe this is just me being shy, but I found it a lot easier to be one-on-one -on -one with the professor. They were, they had, I had a lot more face time with the professor um, as opposed to that uh, now in university. And that's, I, I might just be intimidated by professors. So that's something that I needed to be uh, straight up and honest about as well. But I think um, if, if someone thinks that they're getting a more diluted version of, we'll say statics at a community college level, I, I really don't think so. I think um, as Andrew was referring to earlier, uh, it's on par 
or sometimes even better depending on uh, what, what system you work better under as well. Yeah, I definitely, I totally agree. I think a lot of the times it can be better. Um, it, it just, it, and it also really comes down to a lot of the time, you know, the professor and, and who's teaching the class as well. You know, we have some really great professors at CPP and um, there's some classes that I definitely would want to take with certain professors at, at CPP. So I'm glad I was able to take those there and not elsewhere and like take classes that are in series with that professor all the way through. I think that's really great as well. But, you know, if you if you have the opportunity, it's worth it. Let me take you back now all the way to fall 2019 when you both entered uh, Cal Poly Pomona. You finally transferred. Uh, when you first entered the university, let's say, you know, within the first couple of weeks, what were some of the biggest differences that you noticed? Uh, Cal Poly Pomona is a pretty typical size university. We're, we're now getting up near 30,000 students. We're a little shy of that now. But uh, did you notice that the classes were a lot more difficult? Did you notice that, I mean, the, the, the size of the campus or um, I think Johnny was just mentioning, you know, the lack of uh, or you have less face time with the faculty, perhaps. You know, what were the things that really stood out during those first few weeks? Uh, I think, I don't know if Andrew, I, I believe Andrew does agree with me on this. Uh, going into university, the classes were a lot easier than I suspected, at least. And I, I, I don't know, Andrew, if you agree with me or not. Um, and, and that might be something that is due to the fact that I made a lot of my mistakes in community college. And because I made a lot of mistakes, I, I, I learned a lot of hard lessons and those lessons happen to apply in university. So I took things a lot more seriously. And so that might be uh, just something that is, I guess, special or unique to me and my own experience. I, I'm pretty sure there are many people out there that thought that uh, going into university, it might have been more difficult, but I just, I was, I was taking things really seriously and I had a, I put a lot on my back in terms of burden. I, I remember my dynamics class, like the first test, I, I was like freaking out because I was like, this is, you know, if I fail this, this upcoming test, my first test at Cal Poly Pomona, then uh, I'm not meant for engineering. And I think that's something that happens a lot for community college students. Are they're, they're always asking themselves, am I, am I qualified to be an engineering student? Am I qualified to be an engineer? Um, and whether or not they're, they're built for it. And so that's something that stuck out to me in terms of the coursework was a lot easier than I thought. Um, in, in terms of class sizes, they stayed relatively the same. That's something that I really like about the Cal State system because your classes don't really go beyond 30 students. And yeah, you'll get some that are a little bit more and some that are a little bit less, but around, I would say around the average is 30. And if you go into the UC system, uh, you end up in these huge auditoriums with a lot of, a lot of um, students and you're, you're definitely never going to get FaceTime with your professor there. You're going to end up with a TA from my understanding. And so uh, there's that as well. So that's a, something that I really enjoyed. And um, it was a pleasant surprise though. I was kind of suspecting it, but beyond that, yeah, those are the, I think the most glaring differences and both, I think, beneficial because <laughs> one was coursework was easier and the other was classes, class sizes stayed relatively the same. Yeah, I was, I was just going to mention, um, you know, I went, I went to UC Irvine and I was going to say, if you thought that you're getting less face time at a, a Cal State than a community college, if, if you would have gone to an R1 university where they primarily focus on research, uh, it would have dropped by another order of <laughs> magnitude there. So uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's just a singular magnitude either. I think it's <laughs> nearly zero. <laughs> I, I mean, I've been inside a, uh, UC, UCI's auditorium actually myself because my girlfriend goes there but or went there. But yeah, definitely you're not having much exposure with the professor. So uh, my experience was a, a little different, kind of similar. Um, I noticed that my I and I've talked about him on our podcast. Um, I had a really good prof uh, physics professor at my uh, community college, and I feel like he really prepared me to like take the heat from some of the professors at CPP. Like, so when I got into certain classes, I thought conceptually some of these problems were like not hard. When people were really struggling with it, I was like, oh yeah, that makes complete sense. So I, I was noticing that too, but. Um, I did notice that there was a drastic difference in teaching style. I came from a, C, a CC where everything was, you know, on the whiteboard, drawn in marker, no PowerPoint type 
slides or anything, right? Whereas I come here and everything is in PowerPoint. Arrow lives, breathes, and sleeps PowerPoint. I don't know if Mechanical does as well. But if it's not on the slide or a chart, then it doesn't exist in our in their world. So that's all it was. And for me, I didn't really like that because I felt like I learned much better when you know it's drawn out and it's written out, whatever it is. So um, it was a little different. Definitely shocked me. And I, I, at first, I I thought the teaching style wasn't as effective, but I guess I learned to you know to figure it out basically. Uh, but the biggest the biggest change for me, and it was absolutely almost drastic um was i was i was used to taking three classes at jc um and i transferred to cpp in the first semester i'm taking seven classes and so i i have no time no social life i'm and i'm also commuting so I'm, and i'm commuting and it just makes for this like like a recipe for a mental breakdown every week and like Johnny was saying, I really thought I'm not cut out for engineering. Like I can't do this. I, 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 I'd spend way too much time studying and I'm still not, you know, getting it. But the reality of it was I was just spread way too thin and I was, you know, going through this adjustment phase. Um, and that's really like, it, it was a grind, but that first semester, it like really like hit home. And I was like, okay, if I make it through this then I could make it through anything because it was just brutal uh, mentally. Um, so that was a, a huge shock. Um, so when you transfer, if you transfer, just be prepared to, to take some extra classes because that's definitely going to be required if you want to make it out in the three years or whatever it is uh, for that specific school. Um, and then, yeah, like Johnny was saying, you know, class size it pretty much stayed the same. Of course, uh, the campus was huge. Um, and because of that, actually, I did feel uh, a little bit lonely because I didn't have friends here. Um, so definitely, if you can make friends at at orientation, they'll they'll serve you well. Um, I know it's a little bit harder now because you know we're kind of online primarily. Maybe next year it'll be a little bit different, but um, yeah, it, it, it if you get a buddy, I think it's so much more manageable because then it really lets you know that you're not like the only one experiencing it. I think ninety percent of the time, it's just knowing that you're not the only one that's you know struggling or whatever it is. And once you you identify some people around you um, that are going through the same thing, you could really get through it together. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting that you're talking about the, the loneliness factor there. So did, did either of you transfer to Cal Poly Pomona with someone from your community college? And when you got here, what was besides orientation, what was some of the ways that you made connections with other students? Uh, so that way you kind of had these comrades that you uh, go through your, your three years or more uh, here at Cal Poly Pomona? Um, so for me, I actually, I didn't transfer in with anybody that I knew. I, I knew some people that were transferring in, but, um, were in different departments. So, uh, one was, went to electrical and one went to, I think civil. Um, so after that, we kind of part parted ways a little bit. Like we said, hi, you know, and, and we tried to get together once or twice, but with our course load as transfers, you know, we just really didn't have time to kind of step outside of our, you know, immediate friends or people in class because we're in, I, I don't know if it's the same for mechanical, but for Arrow, we really, the entire time we're here are in basically the same group of class. Since I think the Arrow department's a little bit smaller, um, we're, we're really like everybody that we transferred in with, we know them up until we graduate basically. So it's really funny if, if Johnny mentioned somebody in Arrow, I'm like, I, how do I not know this person by now? Like I, I've had to, you know, run into them at some point, but, um, so I didn't have uh, a ton of friends here and I, um, I actually got really close with some friends that, um, in my like Aero 101, so very basic aerospace class, um, we were just a project group. We, you know, had to work on a project outside of class for the first time at CPP. Um, you know, I, I, we got each other's numbers and we ended up, you know, being pretty good friends, still talk to him almost all the time now. So, um, yeah, I guess if I could drop some, a recommendation, um, you know, don't be afraid to be friends with your, you know, group outside of, you know, the class, it's, you know, very, very useful and you'll make some great friendships. I think Johnny could say the same, but yeah, yeah, I, I'd have to agree entirely. Um, you know, 
these these project groups are not, especially in the aerospace industry. I mean, not industry, ooh, <laughs> aerospace uh, program for Cal Poly Pomona. We're so tight knit. We're a lot smaller than other majors, and so uh, it doesn't hurt to start early on that aspect. But I, I'm I'm in the same boat as Andrew. I think it has to do a lot with our major specifically, in that um, going from community college, I had a lot of friends that I studied with throughout all the classes. We all took the same classes together: calculus, physics, um, you know, statics. But they all went their own ways. So first of all, not everyone got into Cal Poly Pomona. Some of them wanted to go, but they couldn't. Uh, they didn't make it because, of course, the coursework is still kind of hard at community college. And uh, they end up going elsewhere. But on top of that, you're, you're going to find that in community college, not many people want to do aerospace. A lot of them are going to shoot for uh, like civil or mechanical. And so uh, I did have two or three friends that came through into Cal Poly Pomona, but uh, I believe two of them went to mechanical and one went to electrical. So I definitely did not come into uh, Cal Poly Pomona with friends that would be in the same major as me. And just as Andrew you know, has the, this experience where he's had friends that came with him, uh, we end up not really interfacing as much because uh, it's a lot easier to study together with friends that are in the same major. And uh, being that in, in, in that case, you know, you're, you're not going to end up interfacing with those friends from community college. And so I found myself um, making friends with a lot of aero students as well. And I joined clubs that were outside of aerospace, but I, I slowly found myself inching back into the aerospace area and just finding friends there and um, studying together. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, that transition, that's part of the transition. I think that has to be kind of realistic. You, you might carry friends in with you into community college, but if you guys aren't really uh, sharing the same major, at least I would say for aerospace, uh, I, w- I would want to say across all the uh, majors, you're probably not going to interface that much anymore. And you really do have to make an effort. And I know that that's something that goes even way beyond like college and school, like, yeah, you get into work and that's the same case. But I would say that, that I can confidently say out of my own experience and Andrews, that that is absolutely the case for us as well. So how long did it take for you to start feeling like I'm now affiliated with Cal Poly Pomona? Like I'm a Bronco, which is our, our mascot here. Uh, did right. it, was it Was it within a few weeks or did it take a whole semester or are you still kind of working that out um and I, I don't andrew I, you know this is a very good question that we've never we, we should have had this question for each other at like the end of an episode um we can uh, yeah yeah it's a really good question <laughs> yeah I, i'm wondering um because for me i think it took approximately one semester to get familiar with the campus to get to you know not being that embarrassing student and and you know everybody was everybody was a student looking at the map and trying to figure out where your classes are. Like everybody's saying building 17, building nine. I'm like, what, what, what is this building that you're talking about? Uh, but yeah, it took me around a semester to acclimate. Now getting used to, you know, the coursework and all that stuff and kind of getting into the, the weeds, that, that took about a year as well. But feeling like a Bronco, man, that's really hard. And I, I would have to say that even to this day, sometimes I'm like, oh, I, I kind of forgot. I, I that I go to Cal Poly Pomona and that might just be due to the fact that we're online most of the time now. And so that's a, that's a factor that I have to keep in consideration, but I, I'm pretty proud to say at, at this point, and I don't know when the transition happened, but I'm happy to say that I am a Bronco and to be a part of Cal Poly Pomona. So it's a great school. I could actually tell if I could find it, I don't think I'm going to be able to while we talk, but I could tell you an exact day because um, <laughs> I actually, so I agree with Johnny it, getting used to coursework. It definitely took some time um, and it took, I think, the entire year to really make it me feel my first entire year there. Make me feel like I'm I'm an aerospace engineering student. I could do this. You know, I am prepared to, to get through whatever happens. At that point, I had no like questions that I was going to graduate, um, which was a really good feeling because prior to I was, you know, really basically insecure about, you know, being determining if I was going to be able to make it. Um, I can't find the picture, but when I felt like a Bronco, I'll, I, it was pretty quick. Um, I would say like three or four weeks in, I was walking home or I was walking to my car. I had like a nine o'clock class and I was walking out and it was walking through building 17 where the, in the atrium where the, um, like the the black Hawk is hanging. Yeah. It's a black Hawk, right? No, no, it's not. I don't think it's a helicopter. It's a. Uh, it's F one seventeen. 
Yeah. Anyways, there's there's a, a satellite hanging in the atrium, and um, was it a F one seventeen fighter? Yeah. 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 The Nighthawk, and then oh, Nighthawk, uh, I'm sorry. yeah, and then there's the Avenger. I don't know. It's a drone. I forget which one. Or is it the Global Hawk? I don't it's know. The Global Hawk. Yeah. People are gonna persecute me. For, they're gonna just crucify me for not knowing. But yeah. Proceed, Andrew. Sorry about that. I'll try to find a, an image online that I can put in the show notes that that shows the atrium as uh, you walk into Building Seventeen. Yeah. So, and the reason why I know it was I would know the exact day if I could find the picture is because I was walking home or was walking to my car after class, and I was walking through the atrium and I was looking at the all the you know vehicles hanging basically. And I remember thinking like I was so proud to be a, a Bronco basically. And I was so excited for what was to come of my college career. And I actually took a picture to send to like my sister. And like I was basically in the message, I said like, I'm so happy I'm, I'm here basically. And so that's when I really felt like I was, you know, I made it there. And, and that was that was a really good feeling. That was great. I'll try to if I could find it, I'll send it to you so you could use it. <laughs> You've talked about um, some of the, the the difficulty, at least in terms of coursework, in in transitioning to uh, you know Cal Poly Pomona from a community college. So there's a huge jump right there of, in your life, right? And you also had a huge jump when you went from say high school to community college. Which one do you think was more say difficult to go through, or more? Um, oh, I don't have a good word here for this. Not jarring, but uh, which felt like a bigger jump for you to go from high school to college, uh, a community college, or from community college to university? Um, I'll I'll start and I'll say that it was more difficult to go from community college to CPP, but that's really based on who I was as as a person at the time, and you know my curriculum. I was in a place where even though I went into business, I wasn't really excited to be in it. So I didn't really care as much. I mean, I, 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 I'm not going to say I was the worst student, but I wasn't the best student. I didn't really, you know, care about at the time GPA. I was just really looking to passing my classes and I wasn't super interested in the coursework, but, um, so I was kind of interested in at the time, just essentially skating by it really didn't matter to me um but then when i went from community college to to cpp that wasn't you know the case anymore i knew that i had to get a have a high gpa to to basically be competitive and i know that i i, I knew i had a lot of work cut out for me because i thought i was in a position where i like i said i wasn't cut out for it so i knew i would have to work really hard um so it was definitely much more difficult for me to go from uh, CC to CPP just based on, you know, where I was at, at the time. It's so funny because I'm finding out that there's quite a difference between us, which makes, I guess that's what makes us a good podcast partner, <laughs> good podcast partners. But um, no, I, I would have to say the, 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 the other option in that for me, the bigger jump was from high school into community college. And again, just as Andrew said that he, he thinks it has a lot to do with him. Um, I would have to go along with that same narrative and say that that's the same for me as well, because I, and I, I don't know if I'm beating a dead horse here by saying this, but I just was not a good student. And so learning to, uh, you know, fail my calculus two class, you know, um, I had a, I had a semester where my, I think my average GPA, and I don't think my dad knows this, uh, thank <laughs> God, but I think it's, uh, I think my average GPA is 1.7 spring of 2017. So I, I was failing a lot of classes. I failed my coding class, which is, again, a, a pretty. I, I don't know if Andrew thinks that's surprising. That's it's, it's it's a little bit ironic because now I I, I, like, I feel like I live and breathe coding as opposed to back then. But yeah, like it was. It, that's just it was such a big jump. Um, I would say that that's not the case for everybody, um, but just for me, coming from somebody that was really, you know, I, I thought I was so smart. I thought I was extremely intelligent. I thought I can get away with not really doing much and still being able to perform. And um, I was uh, humbled that spring of 2017. And so um, due to that being the case, uh, I would say that the jump was really large, but I would say that that's particular to me again. Um, but I mean, if someone relates with me on that, uh, they, they might need to you know, consider the fact that there, there's a lot of work for them that's going to be put out if they want to be in something like engineering. 
there's going to be a lot of work that they need to put in to be able to make it out of community college into university as well. So it sounds like you both really don't have any regrets about starting at a community college and, uh, or at least going from community college to the current university, which is, you know, Cal Poly Pomona, uh, you know, Johnny, because, uh, he felt like he wasn't maybe ready, you know, to, to step up to the, 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 the amount of work that was involved. Uh, Andrew was talking about how he wasn't sure what major he really wanted to be starting a business. Is there a type of student who you think would do better starting out at a you know, four-year university instead of going the community college route? And what characteristics might that student have? That's a great question. I, I think I can start it off right here. I think students that are extremely driven, if they're, ex- they're, if they're confident with what they know they want to do exactly, I think a four-year university is the right way to go. Oftentimes, many students don't know that though. And so you end up uh, I think the joke is always how many majors, how many times have you changed your major before, you know, you're kind of committed to one and there's always this pressure about, you know, trying to, it's like, oh, once I, once I get college, once I get to college, I'm, I'm setting the pathway for the rest of my life, which to a certain extent is true. But oftentimes us being kids that literally less than six months ago had to ask to go to the bathroom by raising our hands in high school, going straight into university. Um, and, and then like people telling us, oh, you now have to choose, you know, possibly a career path or becoming a, a bit more of a professional meaning major, right. And something that's gonna, you know, echo for the rest of your life until you die. It's a, it's a bit daunting. And so I'd say that for students that know exactly what they want to do with a hundred percent confidence, um, I think a four year university is really that that's your cup of tea right there. For those of you that aren't quite sure, I think community college is is really your cup of tea because you know you, you can make mistakes there, and nobody's really gonna. There's there's not much repercussion in in making mistakes in community college as opposed to that I think of university, um, but that's just my own personal opinion. And I mean, I, I guess I should back that up. Like I had more grade forgiveness because I failed classes, but none of that really mattered once I got into university because all of that was forgiven. And uh, being in two different colleges allowed me to have even more grade forgiveness, though I haven't used it at all at Cal Poly Pomona. But that's just another feature of uh, human college where you're able to make mistakes, you're, you're able to drop out of classes, um, you can switch out, and there's nothing that really, uh, it, it, yeah, you're, you're maybe spending some dollars or some time or some manpower, but it's not as, I would say, uh, I guess, consequential as that of a university. It's it's so funny you you mentioned the uh, needing to raise your hand uh, if you <laughs> want to use the bathroom because it just it just brought back a memory of a training that I had in the first year or two um, of being a faculty member and, and where you know they just kept hammering home if you're teaching a freshman class just remember they were high school students two or three months ago right so I think that's something that we often forget uh, as faculty uh, as time goes on. That you know, a lot of you guys are just kind of so much is changing so fast. Not only are you now being introduced to brand new systems of learning, you also are going. Your brain's developing differently. You're uh, physically developing. You're doing things for the first time uh, and going through all these kind of interesting, extreme emotional changes. And right, right. Um, I think that's something that that yeah, as you get older. You, at least for me, uh, I've been teaching for 10 years now. It's something that I, I, I need to do a better job of reminding myself. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely to have to try to have students make that life changing choice. And uh, we know it's not static, it's not permanent, but it, it puts a lot of students, I think, into a bit of a quandary and they're like, what, what do I do? What do I do? So yeah, it's always a, it's a good reminder to not pressure students, I think, to kind of you have to know what you're doing by 18. Yeah, I I definitely agree with basically everything uh, Johnny just said. I uh, I I th- like I said before, there's nothing wrong with going to community college. Um, I definitely I think I th- I think it'd be really beneficial to have everybody go through it. Actually, um, to some extent, like you know, take get that experience. Maybe in, you know your senior year of high school or however that works. And you know, I'm not the person to ask, but. Uh, definitely learned a lot of valuable lessons uh, my first year of college and to have, you know, like Johnny said, these 
these choices and and these consequences um you know kind of held over your head, head especially if you're going to like community college is one thing but if you're a freshman and you're going to like you know whatever private school it's expensive right like for 30 40 thousand dollars a year in some cases um you know or you, more you, yeah it, you really can't afford to 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 mess around and 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 if you know that you're that person and you know that's great nothing wrong with that that's awesome but um if you're if you're not as sure then there's nothing wrong with you know that community college option so about a semester and a half into your experience at a at Cal Poly Pomona we all had to go to uh, go remote teach remote uh, very very quickly uh because of the pandemic and uh for the net whole next year we still were largely remote the occasional class here and there that was in person with a lot of safeguards and this year we're starting to begin to open up and recording this in fall of 2021 so this is two years into your time at cal poly pomona have you felt that your education has been i don't want to say compromised but reduced in any way because of the pandemic or do you feel like you missed out on uh, of course you probably feel like you missed out on many important things because of the pandemic the the uh, interacting with students, but do you feel that you've been able to keep connections through all the different technologies that we have? And, and just walk me through your your overall kind of experience uh, over the last 18 months. To answer the question, to get straight to the point, no, I don't think that I feel like my education was reduced in any way. Um, I actually think that I came out of this a much better student. You know, that was that's me saying that as looking back at last year, if you ask me that right now, I would say I am getting, I guess, what you would call Zoom fatigue. So I am at that point where I'm like, OK, and it, I think it's also I told Johnny, I think I'm getting, unfortunately, senioritis pretty bad. And so I, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready to be done. But, you know, last year, me and Johnny were on Zoom almost every single day, working out problems, doing homework. We were studying. And working from home like afforded me a lot of opportunity that I wasn't used to because I was commuting. So, you know, I was waking up early, but instead of commuting to class, I was, you know, going out, going for a run, going to the gym, whatever it was. So I had all this extra time that I could, you know, be a human and not only a student and, and then still get some form of interaction, you know, through Zoom. And it's not the same, definitely, but um, it, it, it you had to be so much more resourceful because you're not getting that you know, in class lecture that is really beneficial. Um, so, you know, YouTube was, was huge. I realized, you know, the power of Wikipedia a lot, um, even though it gets a bad rap, all these different, you know, forms of, of, of material out there um, really made me so much more resourceful. And, and I was able to, you know, sp expand, I guess, my knowledge in different subjects and fields. I definitely think that there's some classes that I, should be taught in person like we a lot of our labs of course those you know best hands-on um, we have like a controls lab that i think would have been great in person would have been a lot more engaging and i would have probably learned a little bit more from that but you know it is it is what it is i think it just goes back to nobody kind of could have predicted this and we weren't expecting it and you know it happened so we have to be resourceful and do what we can but um I guess if if you're listening to this in 15, 20 years and 100 years, whatever it is, and you're going through another pandemic, put off your classes that you really want to take in person until you can. That's what I did with some of my classes and, and just, I guess, hunker down and try the best that you can. And and yeah, that's basically it. In in 15 or 20 years, I can only imagine what the technology will be. Yeah. 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 That's maybe very we'll, true. We'll have headsets and actually be in a virtual classroom, maybe. Yeah, yeah, like a, using a, a Oculus or something. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I, I follow the same sentiment as Andrew. And uh, you know, we were in a situation where I felt like a lot of students were drowning. And I, I, you know, I was Zoom fatigued as well. But we used that as a means of trying to study as well. So we kept each other accountable. Uh, we started off waking up early in the morning because we were into the stock market. But... <laughs> That slowly transitioned into oh we're actually st we're students we're not day traders and so uh, we 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 decided to then use our habit of waking up early in the morning to now become a thing of 
let's wake up early in the morning. We're going to just start pumping up problems. And so we'd wake up early in the morning, get on Zoom. We'd start talking. We'd get like, you know, 10, 20 minutes of talking. And then we're like, all right, let's do our homework. And we'd have this banter of back and forth. And there, there'd be moments where we'd be doing a question and something makes sense to me. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go along with that. Andrew's like, I don't get it. And I'm like, what don't you get? And then sometimes I'm like, oh, I realize I don't get it either. Andrew, you know, Andrew's thinking a lot more in depth than I was. And he was able to check um, and make sure that I was, you know, we were able to keep each other in check. And sometimes something made sense to me, something didn't make sense to Andrew or vice versa. And we're able to explain to each other. And so we really took advantage of that. So we were originally drowning, but we came out cooking and punching. Um, and, and that's, uh, you know, that's, I guess, us being resourceful. But as Andrew was saying, we were able to save a lot of time elsewhere as well, as well not commuting. Um, also, I mean, labs take up a lot of time, but when it's just, <laughs> we're fed data, then we don't necessarily have to stay in lab as long. And so we end up just taking time elsewhere and really putting work back into ourselves or working on our own selves. So um, it, it was hard. It was a pretty hard transition initially. But once we got the system down, we were really able to take full advantage of it. And I, I, I would have to agree entirely with Andrew. I don't know if I would have been the student that I am now. Um, I don't know if we'd be doing this podcast and I don't know if I'd have um, Andrew and I built this relationship through the pandemic. We were really close prior to that. So it's odd that we became friends online, <laughs> though we have seen each other on campus prior. But honestly, I think, you know, this kind of challenge and hardship has made, has made us a better student. And not only that, but hopefully in the future, since we've developed, I think, great work ethic, uh, translate into being good engineers as well. How did you uh, both meet? Did you have the same class together? We did. We had Dr. Coburn's first uh, structures class together. And I just remember Andrew was scoring way better than I was. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, I, I, it's really funny. I was doing really well in the class. And then one day out of nowhere, I get a text from a random number. And I look down and the message says, hey, it's Johnny Yee from uh, Structures. Do you want to study on Friday? So we ended up just studying and, and that was actually like right before the pandemic. That was the only time we hung out like in person prior to this happening. Then we went fully online. And since then, we've hung out once. Yeah. Professor Coburn bringing people together. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Through hardship, hardship yeah. and, 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 and toil. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, if any, anyone wants to hear Professor Coburn, I believe it's episode nine. Uh, he talks about what aerospace engineering is all about. So a, a shameless plug for my own podcast. <laughs> uh, and so what if, at least for you two, one of the potential benefits, I guess, of the pandemic, if you could say it's a benefit, is uh, you started your podcast during the pandemic. Is that right? That is correct. So what, what inspired you uh, to start it? Uh, Johnny's, for those of you can't see Johnny's gesturing to me because I suckered him into this podcast idea. Um, so I always thought it was a cool idea. Um, I just, I always thought, you know, I would like to have some sort of podcast, but I never really knew what like to, what it would be about basically. And then I, I really got into aerospace and like being at CPP really gave me the bug pretty hard, the, the aero bug. Um, and I kind of thought about like, hey, this is kind of unique, kind of novel. It's not out there a lot. Um, there are some people, but, you know, some of it comes from industry. Some of it comes from, you know, professors, whatever it is. Why don't we do it from a, you know, student perspective, purely student, talk about what what it's like for our experience. And there was actually, I don't know the YouTube channel's name. Um, and it sucks because he has really good content. It was, a, it was a guy who went to MIT for aerospace. And his content is great. Um, and he was kind of the inspiration for it, too, because he really gave you a look into his everyday life studying aero at MIT. And so um, I thought, hey, why don't, you know, we can't be out doing, you know, videos or vlogs. So why don't I try to, why don't we try this podcast? And actually, I ha we have a group chat. It's me and Johnny and another friend, Jackie. And I text them and I said, hey, why don't we do a podcast? And they were both like, what do we talk about? And I was like, aerospace, why not? We like eat, live and breathe it. Why not talk about it on the podcast? And and Johnny initially didn't really wasn't sold on the idea. And I think I had to convince him a little bit, but it worked out. I think now we both enjoy what we do, even though uh, admittedly we're really bad this summer and still really bad at producing content. 
you know, we still enjoy when we do and we're trying to figure out that routine, get back in that routine because we were going really strong and then I don't know what happened. Yeah. And, and, and Andrew did sucker me into it, but you know, I, I, there, there was some convincing logically in my head as well. And I found the need for, there's, there's a lot of imposter syndrome that goes on for, I think, transfer students specifically, or I mean, college students where we're like, we're, first of all, I was, I mean, this isn't a detail I added earlier, but I was thoroughly shocked when people started or the university started like, Hey, you want to be a part of the aero program? I was like, Oh my gosh. Like people think I could actually be an aerospace student. And I was like, geez, what the frick? Uh, but I guess to try to dispel that kind of like negative mentality and that like you're not worthy of it. I think a lot of people think that engineers in general, or engineering, the engineering program is really daunting. And to a certain extent it is. But I really think if you just put in the work, you can really, you know, you can really achieve what you want. And so that was what I kind of went in with. And then on top of that, uh, we were having our Zoom sessions for studying, as we as I mentioned earlier. And always before what would happen is we'd be talking about aerospace things. We'd be like, oh, did you hear about this? Did you hear about that? Like, did you hear about the, and we, we'd end up talking, and there's a lot of stuff that's going on when, uh, you know, even before uh, with SpaceX and, uh, you know, Blue Origin and all the things that they were doing. And so we'd end up talking about this. And sometimes we'd go beyond what we were comfortable with talking about and that we should be studying, but we were geeking out and the, the aero bug was there. And so we were like, you know, like at first I was like, I, I really don't see what kind of content we can put out there. And I think we're kind of running into that kind of block right now. Uh, but I think it's a block that we're, we're just being a little bit lazy about it. <laughs> but I think um, I was eventually convinced. I was like, you know, if we're always talking about it, then I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to, you know, actually make something out of it. And so um, it was it was a means of trying to get dispel this daunting idea that engineering as a program at university is is super scary and. Another thing was also, it's like, we like, we love talking about earth space. We love talking about engineering things. So why not make something out of it and talk about it and get other people into it as well. So do you think you might continue this podcast after you're finished getting your bachelor's degree? Oh, I, I, Andrew, you and I, we, so I think our initial idea is yes, we'd like to, um, of course, things are drastically changed afterwards. And the question that we always have for ourselves is what's the kind of content that we want to put out there. And that's something that's uh, because we're no longer going to be students and that was most of our demographic. And so going into being now graduates and, and being a full-time engineer, uh, that would possibly change our demographic. I don't know how we go about it. I think we'd both like to still continue with the podcast though. It's just a question of where we go with it and what we want to, where we want to head in, I guess. I don't know, Andrew, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I definitely agree. I think that um, there's, there's, we, I would want to continue it. It's just, you know, we still have to figure that out. And even now there's like days, a lot of days where we're like, Hey, what do we talk about today? You know, like it's not, we're not, you know, we're students too. You know, at the end of the day, we're, we're always um, working on some other things. So, and as, now it's especially hard because last year, me and Johnny had the same classes. We we hadn't really we decided our emphasis, but we hadn't like gone down that emphasis route. So now Johnny's in air vehicle design. I'm in space vehicle design. Johnny's taking jet propulsion. I'm taking rocket propulsion. So we don't have class overlap anymore. So we're not studying on Zoom anymore, and we're not like you know having these conversations around um, aerospace as much. So it is a little bit more difficult to to figure that out. But I think that you know, depending where our career goes, I think there's definitely some value and we could, you know, tie it back into, uh, you know, being an aerospace student or whatever it is. So it remains to be seen, but I think that we're going to try and, and we'll see what happens. Uh, you're now at a point where it's time to get internships to start building up that resume because you only got about one more year to go. Do you both have internships right now? And if so, how are they going? Yeah, so I just came off an internship, and um, I would highly, highly recommend any student that is in engineering right now, um, or even in high school, actually, because I just found out that my cousin ended up interning as well, but um, a high school student, she's a high school student that interned, but uh, it's, it's a really good experience, and especially for those that are trying to get a full-time job a year out, you know, I, I didn't know that this was a thing, but they do conversions, so that means you don't have to interview anymore. 
And on top of that, you become highly uh, desirable because the manager knows you. The manager knows what kind of work ethic you have, what kind of personality you bring. Um, it's no longer, uh, oh, I need to interview this person to try to figure out to the best of my ability what this person is like. And so getting past that interview, I think, is one that I really appreciate and enjoy. So I think an internship, um, I, I had one with Boeing and I really enjoyed it. And I, I plan on trying to go full time with them. And yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what to say beyond that. I think everybody should really try to shoot for one if possible regardless of where they are and um, try to just stay active out there, not, not just staying in school in house, but um, trying to go out and get an experience, whether it be uh, pathways or uh, co-ops or um, even like we did NCAS. That's something for community college students out there. Um, that's an experience that you can definitely have. So yes, uh, I have had an internship and I really enjoyed it. And I would recommend everyone going out there and trying it out as well. Though highly yeah. competitive. Sorry, Andrew. <laughs> No, yeah, you're you're good. Uh, definitely highly competitive, and I definitely you know encourage. I had one too this past summer. I'm actually still working, so I'm an intern. Um, but technically, I would like if you look at my my employee status, I'm ca technically called an on call employee, but it's just an intern uh, because I'm not a full time intern. Uh, but yeah, definitely recommend it. Super important. Uh, but I think that. If, if there's because I've talked to some students that really worried like, hey, I haven't had an internship. I'm not going to get a job. That's just not true. Like, you know, it, it might be a little bit harder. It's going to take some time, but there's definitely still work out there. Even if you haven't had an internship, that doesn't mean don't try. Uh, me and Johnny put in hours and I'm not exaggerating hours and hours and hours of time looking at internships, uh, looking at a resume, revising, reviewing, like all kinds of stuff. It is such a long process. It's such a grind, but very, very re rewarding. And also really it lets you see like uh, you get to peek into the industry, right? You get to see what you're actually going to be do doing in the future, what you're going to be working on, um, allows you to see if you're going to like a company, allows you to see what you really want to do, but more often than not, what you don't want to do. And that's okay. You know, you have that 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 10 weeks, 12 weeks um, to, to really figure out hey, do I want to be in this position or maybe something else? Um, and then, of course, allows you the opportunity to network. I, you know, I was I had no shame this summer. I emailed every engineer that I wanted to and just said, hey, I, I want to talk to you. I want to ask you questions. And then I plugged at the end. I was like, oh, well, here's my resume. I don't know how that got there. But, you know, you, you just it is really a really good experience and and will allow you to, you know, do some really cool things if if uh, if you get that opportunity. Yeah, that's that's some really great advice. And um, this has really, really been fun, uh, Andrew and Johnny. And be before I let you go, do you have any final words of wisdom or do you have anything that you'd like to uh, tell any students who might be listening about stuff that you know maybe we haven't covered today? I have a question for you, if that's OK. Oh, great. I get to be interviewed. All right. Um it's, it has nothing to do with being a engineering professor, which is the questions I should probably a be asking you. But so a fun fact, I came to the school and prior to transferring to uh, CPP, I didn't have a Reddit and I downloaded Reddit just to see what explore the CPP subreddit. And I, I discovered that you have a, a, a Reddit um, and I thought it was, I thought it was the funniest, coolest thing in the world. I remember telling my girlfriend, I was like, this professor has a subreddit. It's an awesomest thing, but, uh, or has an account, I should say. Yeah. But, I, don't have, I don't have my own yeah. <laughs> subreddit. I, oh, maybe I could, well, I, I could create one, I guess. I could be my own mod. <laughs> so well, with that being said, I have to ask, what is up with the, I don't know if I want to say hatred, but I'm going to say it. What is up with the hatred on Dwayne, The Rock. So for people out there who have no idea what we're talking about, um, there was uh, someone, uh, uh, a user uh, in the Cal Poly Pomona subreddit who, and it actually took me a while to get this joke. I mean, it took me like months to understand this joke, but um, they had a small rock that was <laughs> uh, painted with a goofy face on it, and uh, they called it Dwayne. 
And because uh, that's the rocks, you know, Dwayne, the rock Johnson. And I didn't I didn't get that at first. So but so they would go and hide Dwayne and it would be like, OK, they, they, they put him in a little crevice somewhere on campus and they take a picture and load it up to the uh, uh, po- you know, post that picture on, on subreddit. Someone has to go find that rock and then they hide it somewhere else. And it's just this this uh, giant game of, um, I don't know, hide and go seek or something with this rock. <laughs> uh, and sometimes the rock went missing. Uh, you know, sometimes um, maybe someone we don't know w- where it went. Uh, sometimes the rock would, uh, you know, maybe someone was walking along and saw a funny painted rock and decided to throw it somewhere else or keep it, or maybe some malicious uh, student decided to grab it and throw it away somewhere. And I don't know. I I just started uh, I just started making jokes like, yeah, he he made a really great paperweight and for my <laughs> trash can, and I don't know. <laughs> It just seemed funny at the time, and it's it's memorable, I guess, to you. So it, it's uh, my job is done. Yeah, very memorable. I remember I thought it was the coolest thing. I told all my friends, I was like, my school has a rock hunt. And they were like, what's a rock hunt? And I was like, oh, man, I got a story for you, fellas. And I would tell them about it, and I thought it was the coolest thing. I've never hunted for Dwayne myself. I wish I was, but now I know he's back. If I go to campus one day and I have the time, I will search for Dwayne. I... Oh, okay. So I had a senior project student who hired one of his friends to draw a picture <laughs> of me and my buddy Dwayne. It's very adorable. I'll try to see if I can post it and put it in the show notes, but it, it's this really, really nice drawing, a goofy picture of me and Dwayne, like being best of friends. And there's like little hearts, I think, around everywhere. And uh, anyways, I'll, I'll see if I can post that. Uh, it's it's I have it actually framed I framed the picture and put it in my office and it'll be there till, <laughs> till the day I retire. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, good times on subreddit. <laughs> well, if you want to follow Andrew and Johnny on their voyage from being a student to an engineering professional, please, please check out Aeroholics Anonymous. As you can tell, very entertaining podcast partners. Thank you so much, uh, Andrew and Johnny, and and good luck on your podcast. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having us. It's been great. Yes, thank you for having us. Well, thanks again to Andrew and Johnny for sharing what it's been like for them to be engineering transfer students. As I already mentioned, I highly recommend checking out Aeroholics Anonymous, where you can follow Andrew and Johnny's journey throughout their remaining year or so of college. Before I sign off, I'd like to mention that if you're enjoying this podcast, there are a few ways that you can support it. You can subscribe to the podcast using your favorite podcast app, such as Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Spotify, and many others. You can rate the podcast and leave comments on whatever app you use to listen to the podcast. And finally, you can help spread the word about the podcast by telling your friends and family and anyone else you think that might enjoy this podcast. If you have any comments about this episode, feel free to email me at tesepodcast at gmail.com and I'll place the email address in the show notes. I'll personally read each email and try my best to respond to them all. Well, take care, everyone, and goodbye for now.